in India since the last few weeks is very unprecedented. The recent political developments, the manner in which the opposition is being treated, the manner in which former Congress President Sri Rahul Gandhi ji has been treated clearly shows that this is an unprecedented situation. I have come to Chennai to talk to the media and I am happy that TNCC President Alagiri ji, Srivalla Prasad, Gopanna ji, Vishnu Prasad, Rajendra ji, Dr. Challa Kumar ji, Ruby Manoharan ji, Pon Krishnamurti, Mohan Kumar Mangalam and senior leaders of TNCC are all present here. We will be having a meeting of the district presidents and the TNCC executive and we will be talking to them about the detailed programs and the course of action which the organization will be undertaking in the next few weeks. But what we are seeing today is that the Prime Minister of India who should be taking care of the entire nation, who had claimed that Sapka Saad, Sapka Vikas, with the cooperation of all there will be inclusive development, this is what he had stated before the nation, is being kept aside and all his actions are being targeted to protect and defend one person that is called Adani. After the Hindenburg report, there are certain things which have come to light. There are a large number of questions which are there in public domain. There was a discussion in the parliament, the two houses discussed the motion of thanks on the president's address. Rahul Gandhi ji, our leader, participated in the discussion on the motion of thanks in the Lok Sabha. And Malikarjun Kharge ji, the Honorable Congress President, participated in the debate in the Rajya Sabha. And many issues were taken up. A few questions such as, the 20,000 crore rupees received in the shell companies of Adani, where did this money come from? Who has been the owner of this money? This money in the shell companies, prima facie, does not look to be of Adani. If it is not of Adani, then whose money is this? This is not a small amount, it's a huge amount. Shell companies abroad receiving such huge amount, there has to be ownership. Rahul Gandhi ji asked this simple question that where has this money come from? Whose money is it? Whose shell companies are these? These companies are working in the defense field and it also involves a Chinese national. Why is nobody asking the question? This is a simple question which uh, Rahul Gandhi ji had asked and his other question was, what is the relationship between the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi and Adani? In 2014, in the list of those with huge wealth, the ranking of Mr. Adani at the world stage was 609. Eight years of Modi government brought Adani from position 609 to number two, the second richest man in the entire world. How did this happen? We have seen photographs where in Adani's aircraft, the Prime Minister is traveling. 
we have seen adani joining the prime minister on different visits to foreign nation we have seen adani getting benefit internationally for several projects whether it is sri lanka whether it is israel whether it is australia stay a uh, nation after nation and it somehow happened that after the visit of the prime minister of india adani is getting advantage so naturally the question arose that what is the relationship between the prime minister and mr adani two simple questions rahul ji asked but answers have not come malikarjun kharge ji asked similar questions but answers haven't come they were being prevented from speaking in the house after speaking in the house somehow or the other they could make their point but next day what we saw is that from the debates of parliament their main points of argument were expunged what are the portion expunged from parliamentary debates parliamentary debates those portions are expunged which are found to be unparliamentary abusive which should not form part of the record of parliament kam kam thirna kar sir ji but what rahul ji stated was not unparliamentary he raised certain questions what kharge ji had raised in the rajya sabha was not unparliamentary he raised certain questions we want answers to those questions those questions may be uncomfortable to the government but instead of answering after all parliament is the highest body this body was created by the constitution so that there will be robust political dialogue discussion debate and then different view points will come forward but we have not received answers from the government on the 13th of march after a gap of few weeks since the budget was presented parliament resumed its session again from 13th march till now what is happening it is not the opposition which is obstructing the proceedings of the houses we are not disrupting the proceedings rather the opposition wants discussion on the jpc on adani scam on inflation on the plight of the farmers on unemployment on inflation on the conditions of women there are several such issues which we want that we should discuss in parliament we are not obstructing parliament we want parliament to function but it is the ruling party which is obstructing the functioning of parliament arun jetli ji late arun jetli ji once had mentioned that obstruction is part of the legitimate parliamentary strategy but this parliamentary strategy could have been legitimate for the opposition but the ruling party whose basic responsibility is to see that parliament should function parliament is being obstructed by the ruling party and one forum which was created by the makers of our constitution and the founding fathers of india that forum that parliament is being stifled and political discourse is being prevented there are a few other things and then i will leave the floor for receiving questions rahul gandhi ji was attacked by the bjp and particularly by three or four ministers 
in the Modi government. When Rahulji visited the United Kingdom, the allegations were that Ki Rahul Gandhi ji had sought the support of people outside India to deal with the situation in India. This is a complete lie. Rather, La Rahul ji had categorically stated that what problems we have in India are internal problems and India will find solutions on its own. Rahul ji did not say what the BJP is trying to project, so that should be absolutely clear. The second thing which is preposterous is the allegation that what Rahul ji had talked about Nirav Modi and Mehul Choksi and Lalit Modi and Narendra Modi ji himself was like an attack on the OBC. Now look at the lives being led by Nirav Modi, Lalit Modi. What type of life they are le uh, leading? Are they OBCs in any way? Are they socially backward? Are they economically backward? Are they educationally backward? What? It is absolutely ridiculous. And basically, the Indian National Congress believes in equal respect to every single Indian. We believe in equality. And we also believe that those who are backward, those who are deprived, those who are disadvantaged should be provided with extra support so that they also get empowered in the Indian polity. But unlike the Indian National Congress, the Bharatiya Janta Party believes that certain sections of our society, certain communities in our society are not equal and they in no way even try to prevent, uh, try to pretend that they are providing equal respect to such communities. So Rahul Gandhi ji who had undertaken a 4,000 kilometer Padayatra starting from Kanyakumari to Kashmir to unite the entire nation can never dream about attacking any sections of our society the way the BJP is trying to target. Now after the judgment of the Surat court came in, 23rd of March it came and 24th of March the parliament issued an order disqualifying Rahulji from the house of people. And uh, we are made to believe that it was in response to the order of the court that the Lok Sabha did what it was supposed to do. But was the same response came from the Lok Sabha when one BJP member of parliament from Amreli in 2016, Narayan Bhai, Bhika Bhai, Kachadiya, Member of Parliament from Amreli, Gujarat. A court had sentenced him to be guilty with imprisonment of three years. Narayan Bhai, Bhika Bhai, Kachadiya, Member of Parliament from the BJP, from Amreli, Gujarat, three years imprisonment. And what was the case? The case was that a doctor treating patients in an emergency situation after an accident in the hospital was attacked physically by this member of parliament. He was abused. And this member of parliament attacked the doctor on duty who happened to be a scheduled caste. Now the court said 
that Narayan Bhai is guilty under various provisions of the IPC and under the Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribes Prevention of Atrocities Act. Narayan Bhai goes to the High Court seeking relief. The High Court does not provide relief. He goes to the Supreme Court. This takes some time. The lower court had already sentenced three years imprisonment. Parliament did not take any action. There was no such speed as the speed was shown in Rahulji's case. The man goes to Supreme Court. In the Supreme Court, he gets relief. And Parliament then has got nothing to do. This man who was convicted under IPC sections and SCST Prevention of Atrocities Act was again fielded by the BJP in 2019. He gets elected. Now a man who assaulted a doctor on duty who was a scheduled caste is rewarded another term in Parliament. What are we going to make out of this? And this is the difference between action on Rahulji and action on a member of parliament who happened to be in the BJP. Now, we are going to continue our campaign. After the disqualification, Rahulji had addressed a press conference in Delhi. He made his position very clear. He is completely determined to see that the voice of the soul of India is heard. And we are going to stand with Rahulji strongly and firmly. Every single congressman and woman, young and old, will stand strongly with Rahulji in this situation. We will not let him down in any circumstances. We are prepared to pay whatever price it takes. But in this battle, we will see that justice is done and the Congress party stands solidly with Rahulji in this hour. The Britishers had also imprisonment, Gandhiji, Nehruji, Sardar Patel, Maulana Azad, Rajendra Prasad, Rajagopalachari, Kamraj, and so many, so many leaders. But the Congress never stopped its fight, its movement for freedom. Today, the freedom of speech is in danger. And freedom after speech has also become a problem. But we will see that those who are now challenging the Constitution of India, those who are challenging parliamentary democracy in India, we will fight and we will see that they get the answer which they deserve. Just to conclude, I will read the chronology of how things moved. On the 13th of April 2019, Rahul Gandhi ji made the election speech in Kolar, Karnatak, which is today being talked about. On 16th April 2019, BJP MLA Purnesh Modi filed a complaint in Surat. March 7, 2022, the complainant Seek stay from the Gujarat High Court on his own complaint and the High Court grants stay on the proceedings. Why did he go to the High Court and get a stay? This is also an important question. February 7th, 2023, Rahulji makes speech questioning the relationship between Adani and the Prime Minister Modi in Lok Sabha. And just nine days after that, on 16 February, the complainant 
goes to the high court of gujarat withdraws his request for stay and the high court withdraws the stay order on 27 february 2023 hearings resume again in the trial court march 23 2023 trial court convicts rahul ji and hands down maximum sentence of 2 years this has not happened in india in any other case so far march 24 2023 lok sabha secretary disqualifies rahul gandhi ji within 24 hours so this is the sequence of events uh, the way things have unfolded so far any questions you are free to ask i will try my best to respond to them See Rahul Gandhi ji has a set of uh, lawyers who are advising him on what to do, when to do, and how to do, and they will decide what has to be done as far as legal course of action is concerned. See, I am not going to say what happens in Karnataka election in terms of these developments, but certainly I will like to say that the entire nation is agitated on this issue. You have seen that various political parties in opposition have joined hands and they have come together to uh, see that. such an assault on indian democracy parliamentary democracy is not tolerated sir here the dmk your alliance party dmk also close uh, relations with the aam aadmi party how do you see the scenario sir your alliance party dmk is also close with the aam aadmi party see on this particular issue which uh, uh, we have been talking about now the aam aadmi party the trinamool congress and various other parties all parties have come together and uh, they are having uh, a, uh, a common strategy on this particular issue <laughs> राहुल उल्लाई मेरे <laughs> <laughs> जर्मनी <laughs> चेरमेंट 
the chairman of the media department from the Indian National Congress has already stated that the Congress party firmly believes that India's democratic processes themselves will have to deal with the threats posed to our democracy. What others are saying, I think this is an issue uh, where the Congress party has already made its position clear. Sir, he is asking about EVM issues. EVM is another matter. Thank you very much.